welcome you to South Africa and we thank you so much for joining us. I'd like to introduce to you Prof Barry and Prof Anderson, a little bit older professor than you. <laughs> Um, thank you, uh, Prof. Ben, and um, thank you very much, Prof. Um, Bari. Uh, it's, it's truly an honor to, to be here and listen to you. Um, a spectacular mind indeed. I'm still on the problem of consciousness. Um, my first encounter with this problem is when I was still heavily involved in software development. I was maybe 16 or 17, and I built an algorithm which I called an ant farm because I wanted to program ants to become um, uh, self-conscious, so to speak, um, in a little canvas. And I discovered that the problem is, is, it's actually, I eventually gave up trying to sort it out um, because I had to create all sorts of permutations when they are hungry, wh what they need. I had to e essentially create an entire universe of ants and um, I eventually gave up on, on that problem. But uh, call it some 20 years later, um, and it's inspired by our conversation today, I have, I actually just got a more radical thought, which is a form of a question to you, Prof. And I'm wondering if self-preservation is a hindrance to technology development. And I will maybe try and expand on my question. Um, looking at it from the principle of emergence. If you look at, uh, there's many philosophers who talk about emergence. If you look at, for example, um, you take a, some paint, put it on a canvas, essentially or scientifically it will still be uh, material, you know, but the painting itself emerges out of the material and becomes something else. It becomes a painting which we interact with it. Uh, and so the painting as a finished product, if you like, has emerged out of the material which went into it. Um, in music it's the same thing. There's notes which are frequencies and so on. But when you string them together, they become a melody. So the, the music emerges out of frequencies and, and, and the music then becomes a thing in itself. And I think it was Professor Roger Scruton in his book on human nature who said, the human as a biological entity is material, but then the person emerges out of the human. Um, and therefore we interact with each other as persons and not just as physical entities. So I'm wondering, from a technology point of view, whether consciousness, um, uh, I think you alluded to it earlier, can emerge from technology, um, you know, through AI and things like that. But, but then the trouble is, because we are so afraid of what it will do when it emerges and it becomes a thing in itself, we might then want to stop it from emerging because of self-preservation, isn't it? So since we are so scared of what technology, or call it um, Android rhythms and how consciousness can emerge as to become a thing in itself, we then want to stop it because of that need for self-preservation. So just to maybe rehash my question, is self-preservation or the need for self-preservation a hindrance for technology development. Thank you. Thanks. I feel like I feel like self-preservation as a hindrance to technology, to technological development. When we get too far in and we start thinking about AI and Android rhythms and that of the like, I feel like it might serve as a hindrance, but also technological development is not necessarily always good. We can always use technological development for the better, but uh, the, when you have consciousness, then AIs, uh, then AIs might have feelings too, and AIs can have feelings of brutality. AI can uh, try and wipe out humanity because if you give an AI the 
if you give an AI this sort of thing, this sort of goal, to, uh, if you give an AI feelings, then it will either pick brutality because that's what we humans naturally pick back when all you had to do was survive and uh, not well have to be in peace. Have uh, and you know, the things you did now didn't affect the things you did later. But now we live in a kind of environment where that kind of sort of brutality is outclassed. But I feel like the same kind of development will happen to AIs. And so when we begin developing AIs, they will have this kind of need to kill, need for brutality. And we still sometimes do, hint war. And so the thing is, I feel like AI will have this tendency to try and wipe out humanity if it sees that that's blocking its goal. If an AI wants to do something and the human gets in the way, then what will happen to that human, we don't know. It's like uh, on the road. If you have a car and the human gets in its way, you don't know what will happen. So it's kind of, AI is kind of like the same thing. So I think that this kind of uh, prin uh, principle of andro rhythms and self-preservation, I feel like, uh, well, that that would definitely sort of be a hindrance. But uh, it would technological development would not necessarily be good at that point if self-preservation is being endangered by technological development. Um, thank you very much, Prof. Um, it, it seems as if we are more or less on the same page. But then, uh, indeed, we are brutal to other things which we care a lot less about um, in many ways. Uh, and we have emerged as um, things in themselves, as Kant puts it. And I'm sorry for, um, I'm, perhaps I'm a bit, being a bit technical. But um, the, the idea of a thing in itself, as I'm sure you know, Prof, is that it does not need to um, justify it, its existence. It's a thing which exists in itself. You, you cannot think about it beyond that which it is. Um, and we are thing, things in themselves, and that's why it's immoral or unethical to use a person as a means to an end, at least according to Immanuel Kant. Um, uh, uh, and, and therefore, slavery is wrong. So because we are things in themselves, um, we therefore exist, and we don't need to necessarily justify our existence. Um, and we have emerged, who knows from where, to become things in themselves. So what, I'm, what I was really alluding to is that if AI or consciousness or artificial consciousness emerges and therefore becomes also a thing in itself, um, as music is a thing in itself, um, and it therefore determines its own um, destiny, if you like, and part of that destiny does not involve us existing, we would then opt to stop that development purely for because we think we're the pinnacle of importance, but it too would think that. So I'm wondering, therefore, whether the threshold of innovation is self-preservation. What's interesting 